It's also been an interesting week for your former boss, Kevin Rudd. Do you have any concerns about him remaining in that ambassador's job if Donald Trump becomes president? How will he negotiate what he's said about Trump before to where he is now? Look, the main concern I have is that we continue to take a Team Australia approach in relation to our ambassadors around the world. You know, one of the best things about Australian politics is that we always put domestic politics aside and no matter who's in power or no matter who appointed an ambassador, both sides of politics support that person. You know, Labor did it with the two previous Liberal appointees, Arthur Sinodinos uh, and Joe Hockey. And so it's very surprising that the opposition has done a bit of a backflip on their position on Kevin Rudd and started to undermine our ambassador in, in Washington. You know, I don't know why Peter Dutton is doing this. I don't know whether he's trying to suck up to Donald Trump or whether he's just trying to score some political points. But it's really damaging for Australia for us not to take a Team Australia approach and support our ambassadors no matter who they are or who appointed them. You know, I think on this very program, Andrew, uh, Peter Dutton said just a month or so ago that Kevin Rudd was doing a good job and was respected on both sides of the aisles. That was true then and is true now. So I hope that we can come together as both sides of politics and support our ambassadors, which is the right thing to do. All right, I wanted to ask you about the religious freedom changes. You've got a very multicultural electorate there in Parramatta. Obviously, this is of interest to your community. A lot of people there would, would oppose these changes. Do you think they have the ability to offend communities or, or cause schools of faith to have to do things they don't want to do? Look, this is something that we talk about in my community all the time. Uh, as you say, Parramatta has people from every faith and creed, and this is a really important issue for them. It's a really important issue for schools. It's a really important issue for students, for teachers. You know, when we talk about this issue, everybody agrees on one thing. Everybody agrees that we need to make sure that all Australians feel respected, and the second thing we agree on is that this issue is too important to be a political football. You know, we can't allow it to become politicised, and that's why the government is taking the approach that it has taken, which is to say we'll work on this issue in a bipartisan way and try and bring people together to make sure that everybody feels respected, whether they're a student in Parramatta or a religious school or a person of faith. They all matter and they all have to be respected. Now, as a member of the Parliamentary Economics Committee, you have con concerns in terms of grocery prices. You yourself used to work as an executive for the Coles organisation, and you're saying today that Australia has the third highest grocery prices in the G20, and that our groceries are 33% more expensive than the UK. Take us through this, and how much of this is due to the market domination of Coles and Woolworths? Well, you're absolutely right, Andrew. Australians pay very high prices for groceries. In fact, Australians pay 54% more than the world average for food, and that's been established by a number of sources. And what that means is if something costs $10 in another country, Australians might be paying $15 for it. And Australians are entitled to ask why. You know, why, when we're a nation that produces so much food, are we being charged such high prices? And look, one thing that is well known in the grocery industry is that the executives of the big companies uh, that deliver food into Australia refer to Australia as Treasure Island. They call it a place where you can charge higher prices and make bigger profits than other countries around the world. Now, let me give you one example. In the beer industry in Australia, eight out of 10 beers are owned by just two foreign companies. Those two foreign companies have amassed 80% market share and they charge Australians some of the highest beer prices in the world. Now, the Liberals have never taken this issue seriously. They did nothing for 10 years, but now we finally have a government that is taking it seriously. The Labor government has created an ACCC investigation into supermarket competition. We've also got Craig Emerson uh, out there making sure that small suppliers aren't being taken advantage of by the big supermarkets. And we've also appointed Choice, the consumer group, to crunch the data and tell us which supermarkets are charging the most. So for the first time... All right, but in a just, just on that, 
just on that, though, we hear a lot about inquiries and, the, you know, the ACCC one's going to go for a year. What can practically come out of this that is going to help consumers here? Well, honestly, Andrew, I think a lot can come out of this. And you just need to look at the last Labor government, which did take this issue seriously. We had a similar ACCC inquiry and lots of things that made a real difference came out of that inquiry. Let me give you a couple of examples. You know, first of all, we cracked down on Coles and Woolworths abusing small suppliers. In fact, in 2011, we took Coles to court and they had to pay $10 million over their abuse of small suppliers. Secondly... One of the things that came out of the last ACCC process that the, Labor, the last Labor government put in place was to expand competition on a local level. We made sure that Coles and Woolworths couldn't continue to do what they were doing at the time, which is to put restrictive clauses into their leases, which told the shopping centres that if they had a Coles or a Woolworths in the shopping centre, they couldn't have any other competitors. We phased those out during the last Labor government. That came out of one of the inquiries. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're taking this issue seriously. We're pursuing it methodically through these inquiries. And I expect similar positive results for competition and positive results for consumers to come out of All those right, inquiries. Just, just, 